In this tutorial, we will guide you through the process of installing the Artery Framework in Ubuntu 22.04.2 LTS. We will be following the steps outlined on the Artery website installation page and we will also provide additional context and explanations along the way. Before we begin downloading the files from GitHub, we need to install the git functions using the following command sudo apt install git. Next, we will clone the artery files from GitHub using the code provided on the installation page. Once we have copied the code, we will paste it into the terminal and press enter. This will download all the necessary files. Before we can compile and install artery, we need to install several prerequisites. First, we need to verify that the G++ compiler is present by running the command g++ dash dash version. We also need to verify that clang is present even though we have g++ already installed. If it is not present, we will install it using the command sudo apt install clang. Next, we will install the boost using the following command sudo apt dash get install lib boost dash alt dash dev. We will also verify that CMake is present by running the command CMake dash dash version. If CMake is missing, we will install it using the command sudo apt install CMake. Now, we will need to install the Omnit++ IDE. We will download the version 5.6.2 from the Omnit++ website while following the installation guide meant for 6.0.1 version. This guide outlines the necessary prerequisites for Ubuntu 22.04.2. Copy the first command in the manual, remove the extra symbols, paste in the terminal and then press enter. Once we have downloaded the Omnit++ 5.6.2 file, we will move it to the home folder and extract it using the following command. tar xvfz followed by the name of the file. Then we will open the extracted file, navigate to the docs folder and open the installation guide. Head to the Linux chapter and follow the commands to set the environment using .setenv and gedit bash rc in order to permanently set the environment variables followed by adding the line at the end of the file as shown here. Since we have not installed the library files for OpenSeam graph, we will disable them in the configure.user file by setting osg and osg earth to no. Next, we will run the dot slash configure command to generate a make file. Then we will run the make command to compile Omnit++. Once the compilation is complete, we can open the IDE using the command Omnit pp in the terminal. If you get an error about Java missing, install the necessary files using the command sudo apt install default dash jre. Ensure python3 is installed in your machine using the command python3 dash dash version. To install the Venetza dependencies, we need to install geographic lib and crypto++. We will use the following commands to install these dependencies. sudo apt install libgeographic dash dev
and sudo apt install libcrypto plus plus dash dev. While not mandatory, installing sumo is recommended as it provides the option to launch sumo instance from artery. To install sumo, we will use the following command sudo apt get install sumo sumo dash tools sumo dash doc. Now, let's create a build directory for artery. In the terminal, change to the artery directory and create a new directory called build using the command mkdir build. Then type cmake space dot dot to generate a make file. Finally, run cmake space dash dash build dot to compile the artery framework. Don't forget to include the dot at the end of the command, otherwise you may encounter an error. Let's test artery out by running a built-in example. From the artery directory, run the command cmake dash dash build build dash dash target run underscore example to verify that everything is working as expected. A Qt environment will open and select any of the configurations from the drop-down list and run the program. And that's it. You have now successfully installed the Artery framework on your Ubuntu machine. Now, you are ready to explore the vast possibilities of this powerful framework. With Artery, you can develop complex network simulations and test your applications under a variety of conditions. Don't forget to check out the documentations and examples provided with the framework to get started. Thank you for watching and we hope this tutorial was helpful.